Today, we're gonna to be doing a deep dive into deals inside of Zoho CRM. So this video is gonna be structured a little bit differently than a lot of our videos. Generally, we're focused a lot on the back end, right? The nuts and bolts, how to configure, how to set things up. Today, we're gonna to talk at a high level about CRM deals, what the purpose is, some of the things that you can do with them. So we are gonna spend some time in CRM demoing those. But this is gonna be more focused on some best practices and kind of concepts around using deals in Zoho CRM. CRM. So let us jump right on in. Right off the bat, getting into CRM deals, what are they? What's the point of using a deal? What does it serve for, to do for you inside of CRM? So big three are tracking your potential revenue, right? So a deal is a record that has an expected closing date, as well as an expected revenue amount. We'll get into weighting that revenue on your pipeline when we jump into CRM. But at a high level, we wanna make sure that anything that is revenue, whether it's real or potential, is represented in that deals module. Next one is managing your overall lead conversion and pipeline, right? So without a deal, once you've moved things over from the leads module, you've had that meaningful conversation, you wanna make sure that you have a structured way to manage each step of that pipeline and ensure that things are moving towards closed one. Lastly is making sure that things are structured properly and that you have kind of a home base for communication in any of these engagements, right? So structurally, a deal is gonna be linked to a contact, being that primary person, and an account, right? The business that you're gonna be engaged with. If you're doing B2C, you're likely just going to have that contact, maybe not a business. You might have a record for like a household or something like that involved. So. With these three, what are we really talking about? So tracking potential revenue. Here I have my deal, right? This is like a deal record that is in my pipeline right now. Up here at the top are each of the various stages, right? So the steps that we expect to go through as we are working on a deal. Now, what we'll notice is that down below, we have this amount value. We have a closing date being like when we expect this to close. And then we have these probabilities and expected revenues. What we're really looking at is based on where we're at in the process. So let's say I moved this to needs analysis. My probability of closing has gone up, right? We basically said, hey, they passed qualification. And generally speaking, once somebody is in the needs analysis phase, we're going to be able to close them 20% of the time. Now, this is just the standard to actually make changes and make sure that this lines up with your actual process. You can jump into the settings, the modules and fields, and then access that full set of stages here from within my deals, right? So I can come in, change a stage. So maybe instead of needs analysis, I want this to be like deep discovery because that's what we call it internally. Then I could also say, hey, 30% of the people that show up to this deep discovery call are gonna end up being a closed one deal. So I can just make any of those changes as I need to inside of my deal settings, right? So don't just sit there and feel like you need to use this default set that comes with Zoho CRM. You can make any of those adjustments because again, like we mentioned, one of the big things that this should be able to do for you is track the likelihood of closing, the likelihood of that revenue coming in and when we expect it to come through. Next up, we get into increasing our conversion. So what do we mean by that? Well, when we look at a deal, we can actually see all the various stages that it ever went through, right? So this being like a demo deal has gone through quite a lot of stages. Um, a more normal deal, if we go ahead and open up just one of these ones that maybe hasn't been touched, we'll see that this one currently just has a couple updates to it. So we can actually start to see things like, hey, this got to decision makers, or maybe it even got to proposal and price quote, then it went to close lost, right? And so as a manager and from a data perspective, I can actually start to see, hey, what happened, right? Why did we go to close lost at that time? Looks like a little visual bug there. And so I can actually start to understand how are we moving through each of these steps and what is happening, right? So are things taking longer at certain steps? Are we finding that a lot of the times when we get here, this is the point where we're losing people that's kind of the goal of tracking these stages and using the stage history. And then lastly is, again, the structure and communication, right? So we'll notice in this deal, it's linked up to a company and to a person. And it also has a related list for any of my emails, as well as my activities, which can be things like calls and meetings. 
right? So if you ever kind of struggling to get a handle on what's going on with our various sales opportunities, you know, how is our sales team spending their time? What's that last touch point that we had on this particular opportunity? Like a really common example here is maybe a salesperson leaves the company, right? And then you want to jump in and maybe not lose all of the deals that they were working, right? Which is actually really common, right? When a salesperson leaves, basically like, oh, that's a wash. But really, if we're using a deal and we know the communication that's occurred, we know they had certain meetings, we know they had certain phone calls, you can actually pick that pipeline back up and see if you can move it towards closed one. So really at a high level, why do these matter, right? So again, like we mentioned, recording all your customer interactions. This is super important, again, especially if things are ever reassigned or handed off. Staying on top of follow-ups and then defining each of those stages such that we know where we're at and everybody is operating the same. Now, on this page, let's jump into stay on top of our follow-ups. So what do I mean by that? Well, inside of a deal record, I can have tasks, right? So I can set up a task and let's say like, you know, follow up on proposal, and I can say, hey, this guy let me know that they're going to be out of office until the 31st. So I'll set a follow up for February 2nd to, you know, check in on that proposal that I sent them. Right. So then assuming that you've kind of watched some of our other videos, maybe you've set up a homepage for them. These tasks being all linked up to deals allow me to keep track of what I actually need to be working on and what it is connected to. Right. So then I can jump into any deal record see where I'm at, get back up to speed, and even be like reminded of some of those things that I might need to do, right? We joke it a lot internally. You know, I'm pretty good at sales, right? It's something that I've done for a lot of my life and I'm pretty skilled at it, but I forget things, right? Even great salespeople forget. And so setting up these types of activities is a really valuable way to make sure that you're not gonna be dropping the ball on something that otherwise could have been a closed one opportunity. Now, one thing I will mention is a really common implementation in CRM is under workflow rules here. If we go ahead and take a look at some of these ones that we have for deals, it's pretty common that we're actually going to automatically create certain tasks based on entering certain statuses or stages. And so here we see if they are a new deal and they enter the value proposition stage, let's make a task automatically that's going to be due two days later, right? So once we're ready to send them a certain document, we might have a business rule that says that should always go out within two days, right? And so we can set up these types of workflows to make sure that things are happening at the appropriate time and that we're within kind of our guidelines and standards as an organization. So while you can create tasks automatically, you also oftentimes want to set up certain workflows and automations that create them for you. Here, if I jump into timeline, we can actually see that when I was just clicking around here and I moved this to needs analysis, that created one of those tasks for me. So one of these is manually created, whereas the other was actually created via automation. So we're able to make sure that things are happening when they should. What I just showed you for tasks would also apply to emails, right? Which then show up in that customer interaction. So when we jump into a deal, we can really know everything that's been going on with that particular opportunity. Now, before I keep going, I do wanna ask if you're finding the video useful so far, be sure to like and subscribe down below. While you're down there, leave me a comment on if you find this type of video useful, if there's any other topics you'd like me to cover. And as always, head on over to zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help with your Zoho implementation. With that, let's keep rolling. So here again, like I mentioned, we're able to track those activities and leads. One of the ways that we'll commonly see people do that is from this list of deals. You might look at this and go, oh man, that's a bit much to look at. Well, we can flip that into something like a Kanban, right? So if a salesperson wants to kind of batch their work, they might say, hey, for all these people that are in value proposition, maybe let's follow up on them this morning. Then I'm gonna work into the ones that I need to send proposals to, right? These Kanbans, you can move things around, you can make different updates to them, and of course, you can click into the specific record when you need to see the full piece of information. So lots of different ways to essentially slice and dice these deals based on field values and options that are within them, right? So we can group them by their closing date, we can group them by their stage, right? We can see here, this one was in the pipeline, so created to closed for 82 days. So lots of different ways to kind of visualize that deal data and work it through your process. Of course, defining and managing sales stages, like I mentioned, 
that is really where the meat and potatoes of a deal lives. So if you're going to spend a lot of time somewhere in your CRM, one of the big areas is making sure that you've really thought through what these stages are, how they move between each other, and what needs to happen at each stage to get to the next one, right? If we go to here, this like define and manage sales stages and set up our tasks and deadlines, these are really like one idea, right? That at each stage, there are things that need to happen. So the CRM can be configured to tell us what needs to happen and then set the due date such that we do it on time to increase the likelihood of moving to each step, right? That's kind of the whole goal. You always have to assume at each one of these steps, you're going to lose some percent of people, right? You're going to send them the value proposition document. They're never going to open it. You're never going to hear from them again. Or you're going to send them that proposal. They don't like the pricing and they just disappear, right? So the goal of the CRM is just to reduce the churn, right? If I can get 10% churn on a stage down to 7% churn, I've increased my cash flow, right? So that's really the big goal here when we look at these. Last thing as well is reporting and visibility, right? So now that we have deals set up in these various stages and we have deals set up with their closing dates, right? We can actually come in and start to pull reports and dashboards using that data, right? So if I want to come in and see just like what's my funnel look like, right? Step by step, how many deals are in each of my various stages, I can do that. If I want to see it by amount, right? Because this is just on our count of the deals, I can also look at our potential revenue by each of these various stages. I can also come in and create reports, right? So maybe I just want to see something like, hey, what are all my deals that are open? What's the amount on them? When are we expecting them to close, right? So for me, recording this video in January of 2026, I might look at some of these and go, wow, these are really overdue. We need to clean this up. Are these still even active? Let's update those closing dates such that we can use our reporting structure to have a good idea of what's going on. Once you have all of this data, you can actually start to make those predictions, right? And they don't have to just be made up, right? For a lot of people, they go to a dark room, they do forecasting, right? And then they come out with numbers. One of the ways that you can do better than that is by implementing a CRM, tracking those expected closing dates, knowing the probability that they're going to close based on our stages and based on our historical data. And now you're forecasting. Now, it's never going to be perfect, right? But you can be a whole lot closer, right? By actually setting up these types of systems. You can also start to understand some of the insights, right? You can imagine with any of these types of reports that I'm doing here. So let's say we're in like analytics and we want to look at our pipeline by stage. These are things that you can set up to filter by user or to filter by team or to filter by product, right? To start to understand like, hey, these four users are doing really well. Their deals are moving quickly through these first three stages. And then maybe they're slowing down a bit on the back end, but that's to be expected. But maybe I have two other sales reps that don't quite have that same performance. And so then I can do my coaching and my training to try to bring them into line with what seems to be the company standard. So again, without the data, we're just not really able to make those types of projections and understand some of the variance and difference between teams, departments, products, etc. And then lastly, of course, like I've shown a few times here, just being able to visualize pipeline, right? For a business leader, you really want to know what's to be expected. Like, can I hire more people on my operations team? Well, if my pipeline's looking pretty empty, I might want to wait a couple months to do that, right? Because I'd hate to hire them and then have nothing for them to do. So even internally as Anata, we do that exact thing. We're always looking at, you know, how many of our people are working with us, what our general retention and renewal rate is, and then what's coming down the pipeline. And so if retention renewal is really high, which it generally always is, and our pipeline's looking great, then we're going to post a job opening on LinkedIn. Always do keep in mind that the goal of software systems is to allow us to make intelligent decisions, right? Because we now have data and we're not just looking in our crystal ball and kind of wish casting about what we think might happen in the future. Now, let's think about how these apply for really specific scenarios, right? So let's talk about like a real estate agent. A deal for a real estate agent is generally going to be centered around some type of transaction. Rather than thinking about things as like onboarding a new client, their client onboarding likely is going to happen in the lead. Once I become a client of a real estate agent and I'm looking to buy a specific home, that's likely going to be when you spin up your deal. Looking at it from the perspective of an insurance agent. 
Oftentimes what you see there is that an insurance agent will have a deal for like the policy. In the process of selling the policy, they're using the deal. Then once they actually sell the policy, we keep that deal there to represent it and we can log claims and payments and renewals against that original policy so that in three years, you can actually go back and see, hey, for this one ongoing policy, we've renewed it three times. We've had four claims against it. Three of it have been paid out. Here's our overall margin on this particular insurance policy. Lastly, we see this a lot for installation and field servicing. So you'll see a deal being represented as the record for an installation. Once we finalize an installation, maybe the deal will log some product data, some serial numbers, kind of what's on site. Then when it's time to do some type of servicing, we'll oftentimes see a different type of deal launch to manage that process, right? Because it's still a multi-step process that results in some type of revenue. Now, one little trick in here is that a deal doesn't have to be called a deal, right? If I want to rename my deal to match something for my specific business, which I recommend actually, you can come in here and change this, right? So I could just say, hey, I'm a insurance agent. So these are gonna be policies and policy, right? And so now I've renamed that module to more properly fit what my business really does. And so now if I jump over on the left, rather than it being deals, it's going to be policies. We've got a list of them. It's now policy name, not deal name. Things just kind of change across the board when you make that type of update. And so then when you have like a new sales rep or a new customer service rep come online, they're able to use the most natural language possible, right? We really always want our CRM to kind of match the real world, right? So for me, I'm going to change this back to deal just because again, my demo account, I like to keep it generalized. But for most of our clients, these things actually do end up getting renamed to something that's more appropriate for their particular industry. So kind of closing up here, really key takeaways, revenue goes up when you set up deals and use them properly. There is a cash ROI for managing pipeline and reducing churn, right? If you can get a couple more percent of people through each step on your pipeline, that will have a meaningful increase in your potential revenue that you're going to see coming in the door. Next, streamlining the process, right? So we see a lot of clients where their current sales process is extremely manual and it relies a lot on people remembering to do things, right? And so being able to first define and then implement that process with due dates, with tasks, with automations that are creating documents or kind of creating a quote for you that you can then send out, you'll find a lot of upside and you can actually see scenarios where you scale your pipeline without scaling your team, right? So your effective margin on each deal goes up because I'm not just having to throw people at the problem, right? Systems can be another approach to increasing throughput through some type of process or system. And then again, like we mentioned, getting real forecasting, right? Stop guessing. You don't need to guess. Systems exist that will allow you to forecast future revenues with a higher degree of confidence. It's never going to be a hundred, right? Like again, we always want to keep in mind, like just because a deal gets to a stage, right? Doesn't mean it's going to close, right? There's always going to be some bit of wiggliness. Like you might have a month where the people who enter deeds analysis, you close half of them right? And then next month, you might close 5% of them, right? So there's always going to be some amount of variability, but you can get a lot closer to an accurate prediction of the future by having good systems in place that are repeatable and standardized so that you can actually start to use past performance to try to make those forecasts about your future. So with that, I think we're ready to wrap up here for today. Leave me a comment down below if you found this video useful. I'm thinking about making kind of a little series here covering some of the topics at this kind of level, more conceptually and more from like a business process perspective with a couple of those touch points into the CRM to kind of show you how you would do some of these things. So let me know down below if you found the video useful or if you think there's any feedback you have about how I set up this video. I'm really open to that. We make these for you guys. So we're always happy to hear what you have to say. While you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe if you did find the video useful and want to see future videos like this one. And head on over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help with your Zoho installation. Thanks again for watching and we will see you next time.